In the day's other news, the U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments on whether workers can be fired for being gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. At issue is whether they are covered by the 1964 Civil Rights Act. A decision is expected by early next summer. We will discuss all of this right after the news summary. Turkey moved troops into position today for an offensive against Kurdish forces in northeastern Syria. That was after President Trump ordered U.S. troops out of the area. The Turks say they want a safe zone, free of the Kurds who helped defeat the Islamic State group. Today, Turkish soldiers and artillery deployed to towns on the border with Syria. Officials said they had finalized all preparations. Hong Kong's chief executive is warning that she might have to call in the Chinese military if violent protests continue. New trouble flared over the weekend and through Monday, aimed at a ban on face masks. Overnight, riot police tried to clear the streets of anti-government protesters. Hours later, chief executive Carrie Lam would not rule out asking China to intervene. I still strongly feel that we should find the solutions ourselves that uh, that is also the position of the central government, that Hong Kong should tackle the problem on her own. Okay. But if the situation becomes so bad, then no options could be ruled out if we want Hong Kong to at least um, to have another chance. Hong Kong police say more than 200 shops and public utilities have been damaged since Friday. Tensions are still running high between China and the U.S. National Basketball Association. It stems from a tweet by Daryl Morey, the Houston Rockets general manager, supporting the Hong Kong protesters. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver defended Morey's rights today, saying he is, quote, apologetic about the reaction, but not about the tweet itself. We are not apologizing for Daryl exercising his freedom of expression. I regret, again, having communicated directly with many friends in China that so many people are upset. Chinese state broadcaster CCTV shot back that any challenge to China's sovereignty and stability is not covered by free speech. It also announced that it will not air two NBA exhibition games in China this week. The United States imposed visa restrictions today on Chinese officials linked to a crackdown on Muslim Uyghurs. In a statement, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo condemned what he called a campaign of repression. Just yesterday, the U.S. Commerce Department added 28 Chinese public security bureaus and companies to a trade blacklist over the same issue. The new sanctions came just before new trade talks with China and sent a shudder through Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 314 points to close at 26,164. The Nasdaq fell 132 points and the S&P 500 dropped 45. The number of migrants stopped at the U.S. southern border declined in September for the fourth month in a row. The Customs and Border Protection Agency says that it was 52,000, down from 144,000 last May. More than 45,000 migrants are waiting in Mexico while their asylum claims are processed. And the 2019 Nobel Prize for Physics goes to three scientists whose work bears on the search for life beyond Earth. Canadian-American James Peebles at Princeton University was honored today for research into the evolution of the universe. Two Swiss astronomers were recognized for being the first to find a planet beyond the solar system in 1995. Still to come on the news hour, what is on the line as the Supreme Court hears arguments on the rights of LGBT Americans. The deadly protests in Iraq, why are citizens mobilizing in the face of gunfire? A wide-ranging conversation with Hillary and Chelsea Clinton, and much more.